everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It's a great day to be here. We welcome all the guests and visitors who are with us. Uh, this is our Pride Celebration Sunday. We're so uh, thankful that everybody's gathered. It will be a great day indeed. That we're celebrating freedom in many ways. Uh, so just welcome to this place. If you've not done so, on the inside of the pews are these white booklets. You're welcome to fill those out as completely as possible. If you're a guest or visitor, we'd love to be back in touch with you about our ministries. You'll also notice in here these orange cards, which are our, our, our prayer cards. If you have a prayer request, please write legibly and put those in the offering plate, and we will share them as part of our service. We have several announcements we're going to go to. Uh, take it away, Debbie. Okay, good morning. Woo! Wake everybody up. Um, just a quick reminder, we've got the elementary squad retreat, overnight retreat for our fourth and fifth graders coming up next month. The deadline to sign up is tomorrow. I've only gotten one child signed up thus far. So if we don't get any more people, unfortunately, I will need to cancel. So for fourth and fifth graders, it's overnight on Friday night. And then on the Saturday morning, we're inviting our kindergartners to our third graders to meet us. It's going to be at Good Earth Village. So again, you can look for these brochures at the welcome desk. Um, if I don't get enough people by tomorrow, then we will unfortunately need to cancel it. Um, the other thing coming up this week is game night. So Lydia. All right, this Friday night is game night here. We get together in the fellowship hall. There's a ton of board games. It's a great opportunity for people of all ages to get together and have some fun, especially if the weather's like this. It would be so cozy. <laughs> um, bring some cash to throw in for pizza to share for dinner, um, and it'll be a blast. That starts at 5.30. Um, and then the next day, come back and meet here to carpool over to the women's shelter. Uh, we were going to rake leaves. Instead, they've got us doing some indoor work. We're going to organize the playroom and go through some toys. It's a great way to uh, support women and their children who are fleeing domestic violence. Um, if you want to do that, we do need your, your name and your birth date for security purposes, and give that to Claire at the welcome desk. Uh, the other thing we want to talk about today, you may have seen the table out in the narthex with some different logo. Uh, for Peace Church, some branding. Um, if you were at Pride Fest yesterday, you saw some of that branding, some of that swag. So we have been working as a team, both council and staff and some consultants, um, to really convey who we are to the community. Because I think uh, we can agree this is a very unique church in our town. Um, and there are many people who share our values that don't know we exist. So. When people ask me what I do, I say, oh, I work for Peace Church, and they say, what's that? And I try to I begin to explain who we are, right? We are inclusive. We are welcoming. Um, you show up as yourself, and you're not expected to edit yourself in order to be here, um, and we embrace and celebrate that. That is very rare. <laughs> it is very rare. So it's something to celebrate, and it's something we're trying to convey in our new branding. So you won't see the dove. You'll see this logo here that looks like a hand. Um, that looks like, that's me, I'll stand up and do something. That looks like teamwork, we're doing this together. Um, that looks like, come here, you're welcome. Uh, you might also see a lotus. Uh, you may also see uh, people of various heights representing different generations. You may see it as a rainbow. You may see it in uh, multiple skin tones for racial diversity. So <laughs> we're excited about this because there's a lot of room. It's abstract. Um, and so there's, there's room to grow in it, and there's room to expand and, and everyone to see something different. And then we're working with this logo of Choose Peace. Um, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Thank you. We also want to just celebrate uh, what we're doing today. And uh, Bob, take it away, because something big happened yesterday. I guess I'm a special concern. You are a very special concern. <laughs> that was going to be my lead-in. <laughs> oh. Um, I do serve on the Rochester Pride Board, and so on behalf of the entire Rochester Pride Board, I want to just give a big thanks to Peace Church. You know, we had a lot of organizations there yesterday. Uh, we had a lot of support from organizations and church, but there was only one church that was a silver or gold sponsor, and that was Peace Church. <laughs> There were so many folks from Peace Church there, allies in support. You had an, we had an awesome booth with the new logo. Again, thank you so much for all of your support. We couldn't do it without great people like you. Uh, later today, later during the service, we're going to have the drawing for the $100 giveaway. So if you put your name in for that, stick around so that you might be the winner of that, 23, that $100. There's only 23 tickets. So... Your chances are one in 23 of getting that $100. And how much comes back to the church, Bob? 
10 for Stanford. <laughs> And I just want to give one more final shout out. We've got confirmation today, and it's like we talked about last week, there is a beautiful um, folder box out on the welcome desk where you can pick up your sermon note sheets. And so I just encourage all of you, if you haven't done so, this is a great opportunity to get started on that. And parents of the confirmands, uh, make sure that you get your sheets too because we're including you in that as well. That's it. Uh, just a couple of things I want to lift up. Uh, Ruth uh, Larson is doing better. We're not going to jinx that again, are we? But she, we'll say it very quietly. She's doing better. Uh, so we give thanks for that. So, Ray, thank you for uh, your support and love and care there. Also for Jenny Brott's nephew, who was uh, married yesterday down in Preston, and we had a great celebration. Uh, so just uh, lift up Jessica and Carter as they begin their new life together. Anything else we need to celebrate as we gather on this day? Very warm welcome again to all our guests and visitors who are with us. And I thought it was appropriate that we start our Pride Celebration Sunday with a uh, very wonderful litany. I'm going to ask you if you are able to please rise as we join together and we celebrate Pride here in this place. We are grateful for the gift of our lives and the gift of others in our lives. We are called to love each other and to do nothing to others that we would find hateful to ourselves. We honor the many ways that we live and love. We repent for the times when our faith traditions have named lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people unworthy. We suffer when LGBT persons are oppressed, excluded, and shamed by religious people who overlook the fundamental call to love justice in our scriptures. May we work to build a community where LGBTQ people are celebrated as full and equal members, recognizing their many gifts. So let's come together just as we are, each and every one, as we celebrate what God's doing in this place. Let's celebrate God's presence. Come as you are. We join me in prayer as we gather on this day. God, we thank you for calling us together to be your people, coming just as we are. Coming as your people to rejoice, to receive, to give thanks for being this community that reaches out to the world around us. So as we come, each and every one of us, our own way, as we come as being gifted and created by God, as we come just as we are, God, open our hearts to new life, new possibilities and new ways of spreading this love through this community and the world beyond. Be with us on this journey. And bind us together, especially this day, into one spirit and one voice as we pray together the prayer which Jesus first taught. Our Creator, Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom will come, thy will will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and with our sins, with those who sin against us. Welcome everybody. Hi, how are you? Well, my name's Debbie. It's good to see everybody here today. What we're going to do is we're going to read about a book. I, how many of you attended Faith Formation today? Okay. Well, we're going to talk about a lesson that you probably would have learned if you would have gone to Faith Formation. But today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the theme at church. And today's theme is about finding security and trying to be your true self and who you really, really are. Does anybody know what security means? What? Um, safety. Safety, very good. Security is when we feel safe and confident that everything will be okay. So today's book is called Introducing Teddy. It's a gentle story about gender and friendship, written by Jessica Walton. Okay, so you want to... It's about gender and friendship. Okay, so you want to turn this. You do? Oh, you're so lucky. This is going to be a beautiful book. Okay. So Errol and Thomas the Teddy play together every day. They ride their bike in the backyard. They plant vegetables in the garden. And they have sandwiches for lunch in the treehouse. Look how cool that is. Do you want to turn this page for me? Cool. Yeah. Turn it? Thank you. And they have tea parties inside when it's raining. I bet they've been having a tea party today, wouldn't they? <laughs> yeah. Do you want to turn it again for me, please? 
Good job. One day, Errol woke to find the sun shining through his bedroom window. Hooray, he shouted. Come on, Thomas, let's go to the park and play. But Thomas the teddy wasn't feeling very much like playing. Looks like he's kind of sad, huh? You seem sad today, Thomas, said Errol. Don't worry, the park will cheer you up. Thomas the teddy wasn't so sure. Oh, no, even the swing isn't working. What's wrong, Thomas? Talk to me. Well, if I tell you, said Thomas, you might not be my friend anymore. Sounds like he's kind of scared, huh? I will always be your friend, Thomas. Thomas the teddy <laughs> took a deep breath. <sighs> I need to be myself, Errol. In my heart, I've always known that I'm a girl teddy, not a boy teddy. I wish my name was Tilly, not Thomas. Ready? Is that why you've been so sad, Errol asked. I don't care if you're a girl teddy or a boy teddy. What matters is that you're my friend. You're the best friend a bear could have, said Tilly. They're hugging, they're so happy. Now that you're feeling better, said Errol, let's call our friend Ava. Hi, Ava. Teddy and I are at the park. Do you want to come and play? Sure, Errol. Just let me finish building my robot. Boy, she's a pretty, look at all the stuff that she's working on. Oh, yeah, that's a robot. Yeah. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Hi, Errol. Hi, Thomas, Ava called out as she sped towards them. Hi, Ava, said Errol. Teddy has a new name. Let me introduce you to Tilly. What a great name, said Ava. Let's go and play, Tilly. Wait, I'm just moving my bow tie, said Tilly the teddy. I've always wanted a bow instead. See what she did? She took the bow tie off and now put it on her head for a bow. Yep, but it's going to be a she. That's how, that's how she feels. Good for you, Tilly. Wear whatever makes you happy, said Ava. I think I'll get rid of my bow. I like my hair free. How many of you like swinging with your hair dangling? Mm -hmm. That's kind of cool, isn't it? Yeah, I don't either. I got a short hair too. Boys don't wear bows. No, but they could. Errol, Ava, and Tilly played all morning until it was time to go home. See, they're on their teeter totter. Looks like she's got a music box playing some music. See you at our next tea party, Errol said as Ava stepped oh, on her to her scooter. That's like maybe like a camera. Could be a camera. You're right. Yes. See you there. I'm bringing a friend. Ava yelled as she sped away. Oh, she's going to bring some more people to hang out with them. So Errol and Tilly the teddy play together every day, just like they did before. They ride their bike in the backyard. The friend is a robot. Oh, you think so? <laughs> they plant vegetables in the garden, and they have sandwiches for lunch in their tree house. That'd be so cool, wouldn't it? And they have tea parties inside when what? When it's raining. And, and look it, friend. she brought the friend. Who is the friend? Robot. Her robot, yes. I knew it. You knew it, huh? And look at how happy Tilly is. Yeah. Tilly, she just, and it says that. yep, she just wanted to be herself. Do you sometimes feel like you just want to be yourself? Yeah. Yes, and it's good to be a friend to people like at those times, isn't it? So you ready to pray with me? Can everybody grab somebody's hand? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for making each one of us special and unique. Help us to live as, your, as our truest selves and to find our happiness and safety not in money or power, but in living true to who we really are. Thank you for friends who love us as our truest selves. Teach us to be that kind 
a friend to every person we meet. And to find friends like this wherever we go. Amen. Thank you for coming up here. Well, thank you, Debbie, for that. We do celebrate in many ways. Yes. We'd like to uh, uh, take a moment and uh, welcome more new members into the life of the church. We are so blessed to continue to grow our membership. And uh, uh, it's not just about the numbers. It's about the spirit of this place. It calls people together. So I'd like to invite the rest of your family to come forward uh, as we celebrate on this day and to celebrate those rich, wonderful gifts that we've been blessed with. Sit over here next to Debbie. She'll take good care of you over there. How are you doing? <laughs> yep, right on there. We're doing good, yeah. So you've all been busy here at church with baptisms and all this good stuff, so we do celebrate with you. And uh, we want to take it, uh, just a moment and welcome you to the life of the ministry of the church. But if you could just uh, talk a little bit about, did Debbie tell you how to do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just tell a little bit about your journey that brought you here to peace, if you wouldn't. Sure. Uh, well, we were new to the Rochester community a couple of years ago, and we were trying to find a, a, a faith home and uh, came across peace, and our girls started going to uh, preschool at least. So this was kind of the beginning of the journey here, and then talked with Pastor Paul and uh, Debbie and really felt comfortable, and we've appreciated everyone uh, being very welcoming. Um, our son Orion here was baptized a couple weeks ago, and uh, we've been uh, really happy with our experience, and uh, thank everyone for their support. You want to say anything, Heather? Uh, <laughs> Ditto, right? Ditto, right? Yeah, okay, Ditto. there you go. <laughs> well, we want to just take a moment and officially welcome you to the life of the ministry of the church through this uh, wonderful liturgy. My friends, we are all receiving the church through the sacrament of baptism, which we experienced a couple weeks ago. And these people have found nurture and support in the midst of this family of faith. They've been led here by the Spirit and by God's calling to be a part of this church. And I want to let you know that you're no longer a stranger or a sojourner, but you are equally citizens with all the saints of the household of God. You're equally members of both everyone here in this place. So as you gather on this day, do you desire to affirm your faith and enter into this covenant with this family of faith? If so, would you please say, I do? And do you desire the, the, and affirm the liberating power of God to be center of your life? If so, would you please say, I do? And do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith, to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? If so, would you please respond, I promise, with the help of God. So, my friends, by your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the Church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and place. And we give thanks for every community of faith which has been your spiritual home in the past. But today we welcome you with open arms at Peace United Church of Christ. So let us, the members of Peace United Church of Christ, express our love and affirm our mutual ministry of Jesus. Do you, the members of Peace United Church of Christ, welcome these new members with joy in the common life of this church? Do you promise them your friendship and prayers as we share in the hopes and the labors of the Church of Jesus of Christ? And will you, by the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to grow together with them in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses yourselves of the risen Savior? If so, would you please respond, we do with the help of God. So my friends, in the name of Jesus of Christ, on behalf of the members of Peace United Church of Christ, I extend the hand of welcome and love and welcome to Peace United Church of Christ. <laughs> She's going to preach for me today, she said, so that, that'll be a good thing. We do want to celebrate all the gifts that God has blessed us with and to celebrate uh, the rich, wonderful gifts that we can share with the world for the ministries that we reach out and beyond. Through it all, we just ask for God to hold us all together, to bind us into one spirit with joy and hope and certainty. So let's come together this day and let our gifts go out to this world so that others may be touched and blessed. Let's come together and thank God for all these gifts before us. God, as we do celebrate all the things that you bless us with, we just give thanks for the opportunity to share them with the world around us. For all who have given this day and all who will receive, we just give thanks. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Nope, stay here. <laughs> stay here.
to share with you just this our passage of scripture for you. They were ready to run, up, run away because I was getting ready to preach, so they can't stay put. So I just want to share these two passages from Luke chapter 4 that can speak to us today about how God's Spirit calls us to be the church. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I want to sing the song with you. It's a song called For Everyone Born. Uh, if you have a little sheet there, don't look at it because it's the wrong uh, song. So <laughs> it's up here. You've got to listen to these guys, uh, and they're going to lead you on the way. For everyone born. Would you stand as we sing? Because this is a powerful song for us today. Everyone born has a place at the table of God. Amen. To be a part of as we gather today to celebrate this Pride Celebration Sunday. For everyone born, a place at the table. Now that's a statement, I believe, that's a beautiful way, and it's an accurate, accurate statement about what we should be as God's people called together. Today, though, I want to talk about that and a few other things, but I want us to be a little bit more specific about what this all means. We, we often say in this church, no matter who you are or where you're at on life's journey, absolutely, you are welcome here. However, you may not be comfortable here. If you believe that gay people are an abomination and sinful, you will not be comfortable here. If you believe immigrants are ruining this country, I'm here to tell you, you will not feel comfortable here. If you believe that our black and brown children and brothers and sisters don't face acts of racism every day, you won't be comfortable here because it's going to be preached and told. I was waiting for that one. But that's okay. Actually, it's a good thing because comfort feels good, but discomfort is good. Today, Pride Sunday, is a reminder that we cannot be all things to all people. It's a reminder that discomfort is not the same as disenfranchisement. And being offended is not the same as being oppressed. I say this because there are so many folks in the world and in our Rochester community who take offense to the fact that a church, this church, Peace Church, a Christian church, is even holding a Pride Celebration Sunday. They say, and believe me, I've heard it because I got the emails to show it, the gay pride has nothing to do with church, they say. It's appalling. It's a sacrilege, they say. Celebrating gay pride during worship service is so offensive to my faith, they say. And to that I say, okay, be offended. Because I truly believe that being offended is not the same as being oppressed. You see, we progressive Christians are often handcuffed by the fear of offending other people. Because a lot of our brothers and sisters have been mistreated and even dehumanized by church people. So we don't want to do that to others, and that's good. But when we stand up for goodness and justice and equality, people will feel offended. People will claim that they are being oppressed by our struggle for full humanity. And when, you're, when you've been brought up in a society in which you've always had the power and you've always had the privilege, even a little bit of equality feels oppressive. And when you've been led to believe that you are more holy than someone else because of your normalized sexual orientation, you're going to feel mighty offended when those LGBTQ folks start claiming that they are just as holy. See, equality is offensive. Equality is offensive to those who used to have the upper hand. And the times have changed. And for this reason, the fight for our LGBTQ rights has been sterilized, particularly within the church. And I believe most particularly in the progressive churches. I hear so much from my colleagues, my brothers and sisters, who say to me, you know, I think it's great what you're doing there. And I, I, as a pastor, really believe everything that you're doing, but I really can't do that in my church because I might make somebody mad and somebody may leave my church. Guess what, folks? People are going to leave the church. Amen. Because when you preach the truth of the gospel, it scares the heck out of people. We've got to preach the truth. We've got to preach the truth. The, 
No, don't get me wrong. I, don't get me wrong. I'm often infuriated by other pastors who say awful things from the pulpit or they're outside holding signs, but that vitriol is just a gimmick. And while I understand that gimmick, gimmick, gimmicky vitriol, I knew I'd get that out, is pretty popular in our country, I am most enraged by and most afraid of those leaders and those communities who preach love, who preach openness, and yet sit comfortably within the cocoon of their privilege that they have. Churches might allow lesbians in their pews, but they deny them the pulpit. Churches might say, all are welcome, but only to display heteronormative examples of family. And when people come in the door, they want to change them or convert them because they tell them that they're not all right. They're welcome, but you got to change. Now, pastors might call for equality, but they refuse to show up at a pride event let alone have their church even become a sponsor or even hold a drag queen bingo. <laughs> and even the most progressive of churches are afraid to be branded as the gay church because that might be offensive to a few other people. The LGBTQ community has been the group most loudly ostracized by the conservative Christianity church. The religious right rests its institution upon the purported sinfulness of that community. That's why I stand before you as a progressive, proud, straight ally preacher, boldly and explicitly telling you, the LGBTQ community and supporters and allies, that you are welcomed here, that you are cherished here, that you're loved here, and you have a place at the table here. Because this pastor loves you, and this church loves you. So... Many churches, many churches proclaim that everyone is welcome. Some even profess that all, that all of their churches should have open hearts, open doors, and open minds. Yet they would refuse to ordain an LGBTQ friend of mine. And they've suspended pastors for officiating at LGBTQ weddings. Some churches don't want to explicitly support pride because it might offend other people. But when we have the ca capability of choosing whether or not to offend others, we are privileged ourselves. And unless you are a trans person or a person of color or undocumented or homeless or uneducated or non-English speaking, you probably benefit from some level of privilege somewhere in your life. And this privilege should not make us feel bad necessarily, but it should make us step back and take a look and reflect. Is it okay to offend those with privilege to bring justice to those who are oppressed? Well, you know who is really offensive? It's a guy named Jesus. The answer is always Jesus, right? In children's message, it's always Jesus. So today, that, that's an easy answer for you. Because Jesus didn't talk in generalities. He didn't command people to love everybody, but he constantly, specifically told stories and performed miracles and challenged systems in order to lift up the marginalized and the oppressed. In a book called Why Jesus Would Say Black Lives Matter, Derek Flood says this. After all, Jesus did not say, blessed is everyone, but said, blessed are the poor. He did not say, as you do it unto everyone, do it unto me, but as you do it unto the least of them. Jesus did not say, love everyone, but love your enemies. Continually, Jesus drew our attention not to loving people in general, but to specifically caring for those we would tend to discount or condemn. Jesus did not play nice. He especially didn't play nice with the Pharisees. He didn't worry about offending them. He said, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you, you lock people out of the kingdom of heaven. Woe to you, you scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgent. Woe to you, the scribes and the Pharisees, you hypocrites, for, for you are like the whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they're full of bones of the dead and all kinds of filth. He knocked over stuff in the temple. He broke the rules of the Sabbath, and he told the rich people to give up all of their wealth, and he encouraged and blessed and was present with the least of these. He knew that specificity matters. 
He loved everyone for sure, but he took special care to focus his effort towards those who were desperately needing to hear that their lives mattered. He made sure that the widows and the orphans, the adulterers, and the illegal immigrants knew that they were fully human and that they were fully lovable and that they were fully accepted. Jesus, if you will, he threw a pride festival for the most oppressed and the outcasts in the community. And for this, he was despised by the religious and political elite and was put to death for it. Now, I know that for some, this idea of a pride festival that we had might be a little bit disorienting to some, and celebrating pride church might feel awkward and misplaced even for some here. And for those who have been molded in the Christian tradition, the idea of celebrating pride can be a little bit difficult. But followers of Jesus are supposed to be meek and humble, not proud, we say. How is it okay for people to celebrate how awesome they are? Now, when I was in seminary uh, years ago, Jesus was my classmate, actually. (laughs) Well, I asked a similar question of my favorite professor. Now, you you have to be mindful that I'm just a sweet little innocent Iowa boy when I went to seminary. Is that right, Adele? Sure. Anyhow, I had this, I had asked a question of my professor. I had this great challenging opportunity to take some courses that examined race and religion and how they were interconnected. And one course made me examine my own whiteness. Another helped me to investigate how religion contributed to the civil rights movement. And one day after this course, I went up to my my dear friend who uh, Kirby actually knows, Steve Patterson, who's my favorite professor, and asked him some questions about power and pride and my privilege. And I asked, within a Christian context that promotes peace and humility and sacrifice, is it okay to stand and shout for black power or for the LGBTQ pride that we experience? Now, I don't remember his exact words, but I will never forget what he taught me in that moment and throughout many other conversations that I've continued to have with him for over 30 years. He said to me, as long as Lawrence has to teach his black son to keep his hands out of his pockets at the convenience stores. It is a religious imperative to help him, to make him proud of his black skin. As long as our LGBTQ youth are attempting suicide at alarming rates, it's a religious imperative to help him make them proud of their sexuality and their gender identity. As long as transgender women are the most likely victims of a violent attack, it is our our religious imperative to help make them proud of their gender identity and the color of their skin. Beloved souls within the LGBTQ community are being shamed. They're fired from jobs. They're beat up. They're bullied. They're turned away and murdered. And yet we question. Folks, we question as a church. How dare we even question if there's even place for pride in the church today? Shame on us for even asking that question. And others are scared of being branded a gay church. And even so many with privilege and power are afraid to wear our rainbow hearts on our sleeves. Well, no more, friends. No more. Because sitting comfortably in our own cocoons of privilege and loving everyone who joins us inside is not enough. Because I hope the whole world, I hope that Rochester absolutely calls Peace Church the gay church, the way young LGBTQ, that way young LGBTQ people who are barely holding on will know that they have a place where they can come, a place where they're known, a place where they can be loved. And I'm here to say that we here at Peace Church, that as we grow and we shift and we learn, I would be honored that someday that they would call us, hey, Peace is that immigrant church. Or they would say, hey, Peace is that black church. Or Peace is that trans church. And I will say, yes, 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 we are. And I will proudly say that because being specific matters. So like Jesus. Like Jesus, we are called to be visible, we are called to be specific, we are called to be present on the margins with all these people who have been pushed down by the church and by others because we are called to be specific about our pride, specific about our our faith. Phrases like all are welcome or all have a place 
And yes, even for everyone born, there's a place. Those phrases really carry no weight unless we put something behind it. They don't have the teeth to sink into the systemic oppression and racism that's killing our country. Our lives depend on specificity. And if we don't wave our rainbow flags, if we don't hold up our Black Lives Matter signs and shout our pride from the top of the steeple, then who will? We've got to stand up and be the church. And the lives of our beloved LGBTQ people demand on our specific pride. And dear friends, please don't hear this as, as criticism. Because you've been here for years. Peace has been prideful for many years and open and affirming. And many of you are prideful advocates in our community, straight allies and part of the LGBTQ community. And this is a reminder that pride matters, and it matters big. And this is our challenge, because it sure is easy for us to get comfortable in our safe spaces and grow weary of venturing out to challenge oppression and racism and hatred in places where we aren't so comfortable ourselves. We must challenge our own privilege, our own fears of being judged, our fears of offending those with the power or the money or the respect, because offending power for the sake of justice is not merely okay, it's biblical and it's our call and it's imperative. And as a reminder, as a reminder, unless you are a trans man or woman, if you're undocumented or a person of color, homeless or uneducated and non-English speaking, you probably benefit from some level of privilege. Now, I have to check my privilege all the time. I'm white. I'm straight. I'm educated. I'm married. I'm financially stable, and the list goes on. This privilege should not make me or any of us ashamed, but should make us step back and think about what we do with our privilege to reflect on it, to be visible, to be proud specifically, and do everything in our power to make sure every marginalized and oppressed child of God knows how deeply they are loved. And remember what it looks like. Religious intolerance cannot be disguised as love. Refusing to nurture one another due to our beliefs is not love. We don't love others by simply tossing out prayers for them. We love others by getting in the trenches with them, staring them in the faith, and saying, damn it! You will not do this alone anymore because we are with you. And when we say for everyone born a place at the table, let's really create a table where all will feel welcome and accepted and affirmed and loved. The table may not look like anything we've seen before, but it's going to be beautiful. And today it's empty, but next week it's going to be full with bread from all around the world. We're going to create this table to love hard, love specifically. And in the words of my favorite theologians, Killer Mike. Anybody else know Killer Mike? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We got a couple of them. He says this, and I, I'm going to edit. He says, stay encouraged. Stay invigorated. Stay confronting BS at every turn. That is our call, and that's what we are called to do. Be specific, my friends, and share that good news, because God calls us to go share it with the world around us each and every day. My friends, that's our calling as we're known by God this and every day. Thanks be to God. Amen. Will you gather with me in prayer and ask God to be with us? God, for all the ways that you call us to be the church, all the ways that you call us to stand up, to make change, to transform the world around us, to stand up for the oppressed, those who have been pushed down. God, we just ask you to call us to be specific in our ministry, to share the love boldly, be proud in welcoming all of our brothers and sisters. God, as we come, we do so knowing that God is indeed in the midst of all. And we pray for the prayers of these, your people. We pray that the warmth, the love of friends finds its way to the true cold and unforgiving corners of the world. And this always changing life around us. God, we just ask for prayers for your healing hands for a friend who continues to heal after her suicide attempt. We pray for families going through divorce and hard times. We pray for all our families who grieve the loss of loved ones, those hurting, those struggling. We pray for our people and animals of this earth experiencing the effects of global warming, 
call upon us all to be mindful and specific in how we can make change a reality. And God, we pray for all those, all those who may feel uncomfortable been challenged with the reality of what the gospel calls us to do. And God, we just ask you to be with Ruth during this day and her continued healing, to be with Carter and Jessica as they begin their new life together, to be for all of us as we celebrate our oneness in your love. So God, be with us, guide us and direct us, and move us to offer your praise each and every day. We give thanks this day as we gather together. In Jesus' name, amen. With all we are, we share this good news and love all around us. Go out into this world and share it. Be specific. Stand up for the oppressed and challenge the system because this is what our church is all about because this is our church. We make it, <laughs> we what, make it, it what it Others is. Others will feel welcomed. If I am welcome. It will do a great work. If, if I, I work. work. It will make generous gifts to many causes. If, if I, I am a generous, generous giver, giver of my, my time, time talents, talents, and treasures. It will be a sanctuary for social justice and for peace. If, if I, I advocate for marginalized communities, communities practice, practice peace in every setting, setting of my life. life. It will be a church that embraces all that builds community and transforms lives. If I, who I make, make it, it what it is, is practice, practice these, these things. things. Therefore, with the grace of God, we shall be, we will be, we are a safe and inclusive church living God's radical message. And, and I shall dedicate I myself, myself to being, being all the things, things I want my church, church to be. be. Amen. Amen. Happy Pride, everybody. Let's take her home.